this is the highly esteemed Peter Salisbury working miracles with my lovely Steinway modeler. So I'm really looking forward to how this will all sound when it is finished. I hesitate to ask Pete what stage he's at now. What stage would you say this is? I'm regulating the um, set off and uh, drop, hammers on string positioning, three sort of things happening at once. But overall, it's a pretty big job, isn't it? Replacing hammers. And... Uh, much bigger than people think. Um, there's a lot of steps involved in um, changing hammers. Basically, all the action has to work and function. Mm -hmm in every kind of way efficiently. So that has not just putting the new hammers on, then there's a resetting up of the action and keys. So the regulation that you reset, and then finally the voicing of the hammers. Mm -hmm. So there's a multitude of tasks that have to be done. Right. If it were just fitting hammers, it'd be the easy part. Right. But that's just a tiny part of the whole operation. I mean, for someone who's using their piano a lot, I mean, several hours a day, yeah. How often do you think that the hammers would actually need replacing in there? Five for a professional uh, in a concert hall and then ten years um, mm. for someone who's doing a lot of work, practicing at home, preparing for concerts. There you go. So, thank you very much. Pleasure. Next, next thing will be <laughs> me trying it when it's back in sight. Thanks a lot, Pete. It just feels um, the keys are all being polished and oh, that's really beautiful. Oh, that's so nice. That is that's just sensational. Do you recognise it? No. <laughs> that's the other I, can't, I can't even play. That's just, <laughs> that's just, uh, totally. Uh... It's got, uh, it's got a good range of dynamics, it's got colour, it's singing, it's got glow, it's three dimensional as it mm. wasn't before, it was sort of like one dimensional, and it's three dimensional the sound, and those are the things that you don't notice, mm. oh, when, you, when you try the other one over there now it's like chalk and cheese, oh, you yeah. realise that that is just not doing anything, yeah. that you, you can't do things on that you can do on this, yeah. it's just musically impossible to yeah. get it out, because yeah. it's not dimensional, yeah. it's, it's monochrome and it's flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have expression, it flatlines, and when you've got what I've done there, putting the down bearing back on, getting the strings down so the piano actually works acoustically as it's supposed mm -hmm. to, then you haven't got to rely on hard hammers to do mm -hmm. things because you've got the soundboard doing the work and the hammers have to be voiced accordingly to it with the regulation, which is now concert grand. Mm -hmm. So you get wider expression, O grands aren't set up like that in the factory, but you're, you know, you're yeah. a concert pianist, there's no point in having a domestic O grand. That's mm -hmm. why it's set up as if it's a D. And then you can start pulling all the things you've just done there. Really expressive areas that normally mm -hmm. most domestic pianos will never ever be able to give what that's got in it because mm -hmm. they just can't. Uh, I've had the piano back for about a week now and although I've had very little time to sit and practice it, I have been able to play enough to realise some of its uh, possibilities. It really is just a totally different instrument from uh, how it was before. But I thought that the best way to show that was to dig up something that I recorded during the first lockdown when the hammers were really hard and the uh, sound was just very sort of flat and uninteresting and also I mean the piano was terribly unregulated so it was hard to control. So I found a little bit of Debussy and I'm going to play uh, that now.
and now I'm going to play it on the restored piano and uh, you can judge as much as the sound quality on YouTube will allow what the difference is.